So can you talk us through the cockpit, uh, your cockpit actually, uh, the back seats, uh, and how it compared to the E? Was there many differences there? Oh, it was huge. So the E had some kind of visibility because your instrument panel, you know, wasn't that high. It came up to, you know, maybe chin level and you could see past the, the ejection seat, you know, right and left side. There are a couple instruments up on the top bar as well, but that's where the canopy bar is anyway, you know, and the pilot's ejection handle. So you can see right or left. The G model was completely different. So instruments had to be moved down sideways and up to make room for the APR 47 panel, which was this giant salad plate sized radar warning wow. uh, scope along with the attack scope and your digital displays and a plan or uh, uh, a pan scope, which shows a uh, frequency and amplitude of frequency for the entire frequency range. That's multiple rows stacked wow. on top on each other with all these little spikes sticking up. Um, and you had to make room for that and you had to move things around here and there. So, uh, yeah, it was much more crowded. So there was no visibility, but not every Phantom was identical. So some of them had cracks, okay. you know, where you could pass a granola bar or a piddle pack up to the front seat. Wow. The safest way to pass a granola bar sometimes is actually to turn the airplane upside down take the granola bar and go thwack and just slam it through the slot because otherwise the pilot's trying to reach past his ejection handles. Mm -hmm. It slides on the top of the canopy because you're upside down. It pulls it off the canopy and you bring it upright again. Wow. I mean, I've seen a few pictures and it does look like a lot going on, but you know, like when you were going through your training or even on your front line uh, squadron, did you ever think like, I can't remember this? Or did you have like, you know, the cards to, to memorize everything? Or like, how did that work for yourself? I'm a power memorization guy. Um, so it just gets to the point where you have a task. And once you learn where everything is, um, those things are, I need to look here or do this in order to accomplish my task. Right. So you look at all the controls and you look at 247 circuit breakers in the back. You can say, how can you remember all that? Well, I can remember the controls and the indicators, but there are some that I rarely use, right? Like the angle of attack indicator. I kind of watch it. We're on final approach and otherwise I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are the... The, there are just things that you don't necessarily notice. And the circuit breakers, there's one I remember, and that's the air refueling circuit breaker, which is under the second V in valve. It's actually a plate on the side. And uh, there are conditions where you actually do that for normal refueling. But anything else, I'd have to look up. And, you know, there are some emergency procedures where you need to pull a breaker. But so, yeah, so I, that was not memorized, and you had to go into a checklist for it.